Prologue. A Chance Encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrick Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Seros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramire, and west of this place, stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! Ugh, how many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Hello, yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. <sighs> Come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. As if I have a choice. Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. Twenty-two. The three times you leapt off a cliff to quote-unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself, saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. <sighs> Ignoring me, hmm? I'll take that to mean I touched a nerve. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Lost, schmast. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief. What cheek. Hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about payment. You'll receive plenty of coin. If we survive, that is.
can die with your new friends! Defended And that's how it's done. Don't overstep, Edelgard. to stop me. People anyway. All three of them have crests. What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats. Stop embarrassing yourself and stand your ground already. Is it clawed time? I think it's clawed time. No problem. I got it. Strategy, Fred. I'm not really used to being on the front lines. Hey, got lucky there. Well, lucky for me, I guess. Not so much for you. Bandits have a firm hold on the central road. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. this. Let's see how this goes. We will proceed as planned. We must strive to perform to the... Here I go. No mistakes. They must learn who they're up against. Take a breather. <laughs> Take it down! Out of the way! Take this! We managed 
to contain things here. Yeah. I'll take over. What shoddy defenses. We'll be done before we know it if they're all like this. Be sure to tend to your wounds, Able God. Unravel their defenses. Enough of this strategy nonsense. Get out there and tear them all to pieces. I've awaited this moment. Okay, how many thugs does this guy have working for him anyway? We will proceed as planned. We must strive to perform to the best of our ability. Let's try this. Let's see how this goes. I've got this. Here I go. No mistakes. They must learn who they're up against. My turn. The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. This battle is practically won if the Knights have arrived. The Knights of Seros! Not now! If I don't kill at least one of them, Brent, I'm finished! Watch out! They're gonna make a last-ditch effort to rush our position. like you did in the other battle. We cannot allow ourselves to perish here. I'm afraid we must spare no mercy for you. Is it over? Keep aiming higher.
I won't let myself stop here. Hang on. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes. And as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexander Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude von Regan. Grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Hey, I only fought well because I had such fine companions by my side. There may be some truth to that. I can't shake the feeling that we were destined to meet somehow. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. Say, while I have you here, do you know where I can find Remire Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Remire might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. <sighs> Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals, so what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, was it? They may be in Ramire village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action. Not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. But of course, the choice is yours. Ugh, why can't things ever be simple? Alright, no, but just for the night. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There is a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go? But, um, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Yes, do you know him? He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries, so I imagine his name is spread all over Fodland by now. 
Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! <laughs> That's our Aloise. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. Greetings. By the way, hey. If I'm honest. That's concerning. What say you? It's you! Hmm. Ah, it's you. Thanks. Uh -uh. No. I see. Oh. Hey there. Appreciate it. Can we speak a moment? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 
Not good. Oh. You have my thanks. Speaking of which... Thanks! <laughs> By the way... How about this? Your interest flatters me. But I'm afraid I find myself unsure of where to begin. Perhaps I'll have thought of a topic when next we speak. But... Uh, you're leaving for that village soon, aren't you? Dadu hails from the land of Dusker. Perhaps you've heard of it. He tends to keep to himself. But he possesses one of the kindest hearts of anyone I know. I'm proud to call him my vassal. Speak to him, and you'll see why. Dadu hails from the land of Dusker. He tends to keep to himself. Felix is the son of Duke Fraldarius. He has a sharp wit and even sharper tongue. But he's a good person at his core. I can attest to that. He has always admired strength above all else in a fighter. I imagine the two of you will make fast friends. I only first met her here at the Academy. She seems a gentle soul with great inner strength. From what I understand, she has traveled far and wide throughout both the Empire and the Kingdom. Perhaps that explains her demeanor. In the far south of Fargus lies a manor by the name of Castle Gaspar. Ash is the adopted son of that castle's lord, Lenato. He's an honest boy, well deserving of our trust. I'd like to get to know him better someday, should the opportunity arise. Annette is the hardest worker in the entirety of the Blue Lion House. She is truly brilliant. I could stand to learn from her single-minded devotion, if only a little. Sylvain is the son of Margrave Gautier. You may have already noticed, but he's something of a womanizer. That may be putting it lightly, in fact. But despite his apparent indifference, he possesses great cunning and is quicker on his feet than anyone else here. I've known him long, so I'm well aware. Ingrid is the daughter of Count Galatea, and she is far more gallant than your run-of-the-mill knight. She has ever been straight-laced and diligent, even when we were but children. It is not an uncommon sight to find her scolding Sylvain for his indiscretions. your time. Quite. <clears throat> all in all. What did you need? Hmm. 
Hmm. My thanks. Who has arrived? much difficulty yeah I don't know thank you what do you think Another matter. Well, you're certainly not timid. You do realize you're addressing the heir to the Imperial Throne, yes? Still, I suppose I admire that sort of freedom. It must be nice not to have your lot in life decided for you. Hubert of House Vestra is my attendant. His family is unusual in that they're noble, but lack territory of their own. Hubert is deeply loyal to me, and you can trust him completely. In fact, I imagine he's quite grateful for what you've already done. That's Dorothea Arnault. She's an up-and-coming songstress in a famous imperial opera company, or she was, at least. For some reason, she abandoned her musical career and enrolled in the Officers' Academy. She has a very magnetic personality, which I'm sure you'll see. Have you spoken with Ferdinand? One conversation will explain him far better than I can. He's the heir to an influential house, which drives him to excel. But he can be quite the handful sometimes. One of our classmates usually stays holed up in the dormitory instead of coming on these assignments. Her name is Bernadetta. If you bump into her, don't be surprised if she screams and runs away. That's sort of her thing. 
Gaspar is the second-born son of a great and noble house. But as he's not the heir, you might say he joined the Academy to make his own way. War and fighting are his sole pursuits, so I bet the two of you will get along just fine. Petra isn't from the Empire. She's the granddaughter of the King of Bridget, which is an archipelago situated off our western coast. You'll find her a quick study, a gifted fighter, and endlessly curious. But always come prepared to talk, because she'll definitely want to pick your brain. Surely you know someone like Linhart. He's as bright as they come, yet just as lazy as well. That's simply how he is, though. I can't force him to apply himself, but he'll come around, most likely. What are your thoughts? Oh, hey! So... Right on! Thanks! I'll do it! Ah, it is you. busy. Speaking of, how's that? Who, me? I'm more curious about you personally. If you don't have anything better to do, I'd be glad to have you join us at Garrick Mach.
Have you met him yet? At first, I thought he was real serious and persnickety. But that image shattered pretty quick once I noticed him chatting up every girl in the monastery. Hilda's the only daughter of Duke Goneril. Seems like she had a pretty cushy life growing up. Which means she's gotten into the habit of slacking off and making other people do things for her. He's a pretty friendly guy. Though it'd be nice if he talked about something other than muscles. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. He's had it pretty rough. Don't ever treat her like a child. I made that mistake earlier and she nearly took my head off. But she's clearly the youngest out of this year's students, so I don't get what the big deal is. Just another pampered noble, I guess. Ignatz likes the great outdoors. Definitely more than the rest of us, anyway. He's the second son of a merchant family, but says he wants to be a knight. He doesn't really seem suited for it, though. Maybe his parents are making him do it. Oh, Marianne? She's Margrave Edmund's daughter, but that's all I know about her. She doesn't interact with the other students at all. I'll admit, she intrigues me. Leone wants to be a mercenary. I bet you two would have lots to talk about. You're both pretty frank, too. I just hope you're not as obsessed with saving money as she is. I see. That's concerning. If I'm honest. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but... Well, perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that, exactly? Because you've done us a great service, and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officers' Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they cross swords with bandits. If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign. Perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softy. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be. But this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. You make a poor case, Alois, but I can see where this is heading. I'll come with you to the monastery, but I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but... That would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Hmm? Told me what? 
uh, told you how dashing you are in that armor. Not just any man could pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this considering you're only here because of us, but... Well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The Knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this as just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me, every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king, the kind who looks after his people. Uh, seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's gonna be easy to work with. <laughs> of course you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further.